and welcome to the show. It is February 28th, 2022. Let me start by saying I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. So I was feeling pretty good today. It's Monday, so I thought I'd make a video. This is, uh, this is probably more entertainment than not, but still, it's pretty cool. So uh, I get asked a, um, a fair number of questions about, you know, how is this thing going to play out? You know, will we get paid this, that? What's going to happen? <laughs> so I figured I would just lay out the scenario and see what it looks like, right? So people could get an idea. Uh, so this is what I came up with. So uh, why was I feeling good today, by the way? Uh, this is why. Oh, stock price is up. <laughs> and MTLP is uh, closed today at about a buck ninety-five on an up note. Um, it um, yeah, it uh, it did quite well. Um, and if we look at MMAT, it closed today at uh, two fifteen, also on an up note. It's uh, if we look, there's a big volume spike at the end of the day there. Yeah, let me look back at the yeah. There's no big volume spike on MMAT, but there's definitely a big volume spike at the end of the day on. MMAT. We got earnings coming up very soon. We've got some possible good news coming up with uh, Torchlight Preferred Shares. Who knows, right? We uh, we got some good things coming up, I think. Anyway, I'm feeling pretty good, and uh, that's why. So here's the story. We um, we had two companies. One was an oil and gas company called Torchlight Energy. They have oil and gas assets. There's another company called Metamaterials. They work on next generation stuff. They work on um, basically nanotech structures. Um, you know, you can think of it as sci-fi stuff. Basically, they're tomorrow's technology, to, you know, available today. Right? The two are very different companies. One's kind of like in the semiconductor area, which is metamaterials, or at least it's classified as being in classified as being in the semiconductor area. Torchlight Energy is, of course, an oil and gas uh, company. Now, these two companies merged. Um, their shares changed names. Previously, the metamaterial shares was trading under the stock symbol MMAX. Um, that stock symbol stopped, you know, ceased to exist. The Torchlight Energy shares were trading under the symbol TRCH. That those shares ceased to exist, and now we have um, now we only have metamaterial shares, which are MMAT shares, and this thing called a Series A preferred share. That's what happened after the merger. The Series A preferred shares are directly related to the oil and gas assets. The idea was that when the oil and gas assets were sold, the Series A preferred shares shareholders would get a dividend, right? That's why. The only way to get the Series A preferred shares at that time was if you were a Torchlight shareholder, right? If you were an, a, yeah, an MMAX shareholder, you wouldn't get the Series A preferred, preferred share. So over time, what happened, uh, the Series A preferred shares transformed into this MMTLP shares, which were um, traded on the OTC over-the-counter exchange. So um, so let's let's talk about some people beforehand, right? So previously, we had some people who were long Torch and people who were long Metamaterials, long MMAX, right? So, um, and we also have people who were short Torch, right? And sh people who were short uh, Metamaterials, right? So, after the merger, um, the shorts of metamaterials became a short of metamaterial became a short of MMAT. Right? If you were short MMAX before, you you were short MMA, a, MMAT. If you were long MMAX before, you became long MMAT. If you were a Torchlight shareholder before, you became an, a metamaterial shareholder and a Series A preferred shareholder. Right? So you were long. But, you know, you were long both of those. And if you were short MMAT, I mean, if you were short Torchlight, you became short MMAT, and you were short the Series A preferred shares. Now, the Series A preferred shares were not available from anyone except for Metamaterials. So you were short something you could not get a hold of. You had to deliver, at, you know, you, you have a liability to deliver something in the future that um, you cannot that you do not own, that you do not have a, any way to get a, a hold of. So, um, so anyway, so after the um, Series A preferred shareholders became, I mean, after the Series A preferred shares transformed into MMTLP shares, now these shorts who were short um, Series A preferred shares, they became short MM, 
MMTLP, right? So now they could get a hold of it over the the over the counter exchange somehow, and then uh, provide that. So um, so they were less trapped than, than they were before. Okay, and that's what happened. So this is a scenario of how things might play out, right? So this is just an idea. So let's say that Metamaterials announces a dividend for the Series A preferred shares. Let's say they sell the oil and gas assets. What happens? Well, the oil and gas that mean you know once they sell the oil and gas assets, that means that your um, your Series A preferred shares get a dividend. The price of oil has been increasing over the last year or so. It's uh, ended the day today. Well, at the time of this video, it was around ninety five dollars per barrel. Okay, and about a year ago, it was around in the mid forties or so per barrel. Right? So it's basically more than doubled. I did, a, did a, I did a dividend calculation based upon the price of oil uh, and a non-taxable event as to what we might get paid in terms of the valuation of what, we, of what the dividend might be. And um, I'm saying it's in the green, so it's anywhere from $90 to $100, let's just say, which would mean that it's anywhere from $63 to $73, right? $63.5 dollars to, to almost $74. So let's just say that uh, that that the dividend gets announced and it's valued at sixty five dollars per share. You know, it's done via stock swap with some company X Y Z. We'll call it right, and it's a non taxable event. And that's how they're able to do this. What would happen at that point? Well, at that point, people will start buying MMTLP because you know the price of, of MMTLP is pretty low, and they can get a dividend that's worth sixty five dollars per share. So the price of MMTLP will start rising. And it'll keep going until MMTLP hits about sixty-five dollars per share, which will probably happen pretty quickly, right? Because if you can buy something, if you can buy something for two dollars that pays out sixty-five dollars guaranteed, you're going to buy that. I mean, everyone's going to buy that as, as fast as they can, right? So that means the torchlight shorts, who were short, who, you know, who became MMTLP shorts, they've they've now got a liability of sixty-five dollars per share for every share of MMTLP, right? They're stuck there. What are they going to do? Well, let's see. The MMTLP dividend is announced, right? That means price of MMTLP rises dramatically. It means these torchlight uh, MMTLP shorts, you know, they'll wind up getting, uh, they'll either have to, have to come up with a cash or they'll get margin calls, right? So let's say they, they get liquidated somehow. Some portion of them will get liquidated, the, you know, so let's say that happens. It, those that do get liquidated, um, they'll also wind up liquidating their, um, you know, they'll wind up liquidating their MMAT position, right? Because you know they, you know they have they get margin call. They got to sell everything. They got to close all their positions until, you know, until they have enough margin on their books. So their so as a result of that, the their MMAT positions you know get closed out, which means that, that that the shorts wind up buying MMAT as well. So the price of MMAT starts rising, right, and it will probably rise dramatically due to the forced liquidations you know via the shorts. And when the price of MMAT starts rising, that's going to affect people who were never short torchlight, right? They were only short metamaterials, so they're going to start feeling the squeeze. Some portion of them will get of those people will get liquidated, and then you'll see the price of MMAT rise even more, right? And again, it's due to forced liquidations. But what about this guy? This guy, he he's a guy who owns both MMAT, and he's got these metamaterials torchlight preferred shares. What's he gonna do? What's he thinking? Right? Well, he's. Let's just say he's pretty smart. He kind of figured out what's going to happen. You know, he knows the shorts are going to get liquidated on one side. You know, he knows the torch shorts will probably get liquidated. He knows that the metamaterial shorts are going to get liquidated. And he knows that that's going to cause a rapid price in the price of, MM, of MMAT. So this guy, he's probably going to buy MMAT with a dividend. Right? He gets paid his dividend. He gets paid that cash amount that, you know, or that stock swap or whatever. He gets paid the value of $65 per share. He sees MMAT is at a low price and he knows that that's going to start running. So he's going to front run it, run all of those guys. He's going to say, I know th that these prices are going to go up. I'm going to buy that with a dividend before they do go up. <laughs> so he's going to, he's going to buy MMAT and he's going to wind up being long MMAT. And the price of MMAT is going to keep going up. 
So we've got a situation where the price of MMAT goes up dramatically and you'll just have these, you know, these longs as the other shorts get liquidated. That's a nice scenario, but where are we now? Well, the dividend hasn't been announced yet. There's about 170,000 MMAT shareholders. And, um, you know, I know this story, but the shorts are also pretty smart. And they know this story really well. <laughs> in fact, they've been playing this out in their head probably for the last, I don't know, six months to a year. And um, something tells me they don't want to be liquidated. And they'd, they'd probably like to avoid bankruptcy if possible. <laughs> So what would, what would you do if you were short, right? I mean, what, you know, you, of course you probably wouldn't want to be liquidated, right? So if I were short, I might want to, you know, you know, you know, get rid of, you know, stop this whole process just by buying some MMTLP shares. That would stop it, right? Close your short position in MMTLP. But the, the problem of that is that, you know, the price is $2 right now. If you start buying all the MMTLP shares, the price could rise substantially, and then that could cause people to buy. So you don't want to just buy MMTLP. You want, you want the price to be low, and you want to liquidate your, you know, your short position in, in MMTLP, which means you, know, you want people to sell. So, you want to, so you know, by buying the MMTLP shares at a low price, you can reduce your liability. You can prevent bankruptcy. That, that, that's where you want to be headed. That, that would be ideal, right? But the problem is longs kind of know, know this story as well, and they don't want to sell. So what can you do? What can you do? The standard thing that most shorts would do is they would try to increase volatility, right? And pick up the shares whenever possible. If they pick up the, up the shares at, at at two dollars a share, hey, that's a that's a positive because you know they save themselves from having to shell out sixty five dollars a share, right? If they can pick it up at three dollars a share, that's a positive. But you know they can't let the price get too high. They got to slam it back down when it does, so that way people will you know will feel the urgency to sell. You know if you saw the price go to three dollars, you know some people might say, oh, I could have sold at three dollars. They're not thinking necessarily that oh, I. You know, I should just wait a bit and sell at 65 because, you know, the dividend hasn't been announced yet. There's enough uncertainty there that some people might sell. And uh, so that's where we're at. Yeah, the, I think the shorts plan right now is to increase volatil volatility wherever possible. And they're going to pick up, you know, whatever they can. So where are we now in prices? Well, like I said earlier, we're, we're at a buck 94 right now in MMTLP. And we're at two dollars and fifteen cents in mm in MMAT. And I think this was from an interview that George Palacaris conducted in October, uh, you know, October sixth of twenty twenty one. But it really sums, you know, his quote really sums up where we're at now. So let's let's listen in. One thing that I wanted to mention, maybe Amanda, at this point, which is related to the question, I feel that we have just reached base camp. Uh, where we have been equipped with the tools to now climb Mount Everest and reach the summit. And it's just a new chapter for us. There is no exit for the founders. In fact, uh, what has happened this year is just re-energize the entire team. Re-energize the entire team. That that about sums it up. I mean, that's that's basically how how I feel today. <laughs> just FYI. So um, so this is some of the oil and gas assets that they want to get rid of, right? Or that they not get rid of that they want to actually sell to someone who wants to buy them. <laughs> A lot of people want to buy them right now with the price of oil oil and gas going you know through the roof, ninety five dollars per barrel and above. This is Founders B nineteen well number one. Um, Torchlight had some drone footage that they um, th that they circled the well with at night, so I was uh, I was displaying that. And um, right now, the stuff coming up right now is uh, we got Q4 and fiscal year 2021 results are going to be announced via via webcast, and there's going to be a shareholder Q and A. That's going to happen on Wednesday, 2022. Uh, 2022, March 2nd at um, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, there's also going to be, I don't know, I don't know if there's going to be a, div um, well, we know that there's going to be a dividend announcement for sure in March. 
What that dividend announcement is going to be, I don't know. When it's going to be, I don't know. Could it be at this shareholder meeting? I don't know, but it's the number one question there. Number one question there. And, uh, you know, these oil and gas assets that you're looking at right now, that's on a lot of people's minds. <laughs> it's on a lot of people's minds. So with that, let me just end by saying I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Uh, this information is presented, uh, you know, for entertainment and educational purposes only. And this is just a story about how things might play out. It's just a possibility. It's something that uh, it's 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 something that I've been considering. Okay. So uh, anyway, with that, I'd just like to say goodbye and good night.